When shopping for fine art paints, many people head to their local craft store where there's a wide selection of paint supplies. But are all supplies equal? There's a huge difference in price, but does that also mean a difference in quality? And does it matter? Most art instructors, myself included, will tell you it does. And let me show you why. In this video, we're gonna examine professional, student, and academy grade paints. Professional being the top choice and most expensive, and academy being the least. The professional paint I'm gonna use is Windsor & Newton, who also makes the student paint that we'll use. It's their Cotman brand. I chose these two because of their popularity and their accessibility and I'll use Grunbacher Academy for the academy level paint. Even though it's student grade, it's a little inferior to Kopman. The professional paint costs about $12 a tube, while the student grade Kopman was five, and the academy grade was about $5 as well. Now towards the end, I'll also show you how the very least expensive paints perform, and these tend to run about 40 cents a tube. The first thing you need to realize is that often you can find the same paints in each paint grade. So for example, here we see cadmium pale yellow in a professional paint. Notice the code for the specific pigment used for the color in this paint. We can find the same color in the Kotman student paint, but notice two things, the word hue and the fact that it uses two different pigments to achieve the color. This is because the original pigment is a bit pricey. They save money by using two cheaper pigments, but this combination will perform differently than the original pigment. Another difference between paint grades is the fact that sometimes the manufacturers will add fillers to lower the prices of the cheaper paints. For example, the first paint I'm mixing up is a professional paint, and this is the student version of the same paint. Same pigment, but notice the tint. You can actually see that they added a touch of white to the paint. It's slightly milky and takes more paint to create the mix. The third paint is academy grade, and although it's not as milky, it has a warmer hue and seems almost a bit opaque. These are three of the paints that we'll be using in our testing, professional, student, and academy paints. I'm squeezing out a small amount of each paint grade and will use the same amount of water for each mix. I wanna keep the mixes as close to the same as possible. Now using the same brush and a full brush load each time, I'll begin by painting direct lines with both colors, starting with the professional grade and then I'll repeat the process for each of the other two paints. Offhand, there's not a huge difference between the different grades at this point. One thing you will notice is that the pigment distribution is more even in the professional version. Notice the density where the strokes begin. Now we'll see how the same line responds wet and wet. For each one, I'll wet a section with a brush fully loaded with water. This time, we'll just use the red paint. Remember, this is all on the same paper, professional grade. The only difference is the paint. And now for the Academy paint. We can see that the difference between the three is not enormous, but notice the slight differences. Look at the edges and the paint distribution. But let's take each paint and paint blended strokes. They should look seamless as the pigments blend together. And we're beginning with the professional paint. Now we're repeating it with the student grade paint. The professional paint had kind of self equalized, where you can see the student version is having a little more difficulty with that. And finally, the academic paint. This one's having a little trouble evening out as well, which could have to do with the pigment as well as the type of binder. Now let's paint gradients with each of the paints and let's see how they do. This is the professional paint. 
And now for the student paint. The initial stroke goes on nicely, although it's not really flowing into the subsequent strokes. And now for the academy paint. This paint definitely absorbs too quickly and leaves each stroke area more independent, less blended. Now that the paints are dry, let's take another look. Here's the blended swatch of the Academy paint. We've got a little bit of a backwash here where the paint took longer to soak in, and there is a bit of a line there. Now here is the student paint, which has a high pigment intensity, and you have an area of pigment concentration in the corner where it did not self-distribute. It didn't create a backwash, which makes me think there's extra binder, and that could account for the vibrance as well. Beautiful color, but it did not distribute very evenly. Compare that to the professional grade, which is very even throughout. Now let's take a look at the dried gradients. Again, we'll start with the Academy. It's not too bad, but you do see the individual strips where I stroked. The gradient doesn't quite transition enough. When we look at the student paint, you kind of see the same issue, although less so. You do have a little bit of a hard edge here, but overall it's not horrible. And lastly, the professional grade, which has a very nice even distribution. You don't really see those strips. Basically, the paint self blends a little better than the other two. Now let's test each paint by dropping it into a wet circle. And now we'll drop in two droplets of the student paint. Remember, this is the same paper. And we'll repeat the same process for the academic paint. The professional paint spread much more, meaning the paint likely uses a better quality pigment and binder. The other two aren't spreading as quickly or as evenly. And notice the color difference in the Academy version. It looks like a very different pigment. Now let's repeat the exercise with the French Ultramarine Blue. This blue is a granulating blue, which means in this case it has heavier pigment particles. So it makes sense that it wouldn't spread quite as much. But let's see how it settles, especially once it's dry. The student paint is initially performing very similarly, although as it sits, it's spreading out less and has a stronger feathered edge. Even the Academy brand initially looks similar in performance. However, the pigment does look a little more dense and it's spreading more like the student grade at this point. If the student grade seems to have a little extra binder, I would say the Academy brand has too little binder. And it may be using a synthetic binder, because if you look at it up close, the pigment's flow was restricted and it's very dense. This close view makes it look like the pigment just kind of dropped in bulk. And once it dried completely, you can see how matte it looks. One job of a binder is to seal the pigment onto the surface. So let's see if I'm correct that this paint has too little binder. We'll take a corner of a clean piece of paper and rub it on the dried paint. As suspected, some of the pigment comes off. So the Academy paint is lacking or has a substandard binder not fully sealing the pigment onto the surface. Well, how about the student grade? Let's perform the same test. We'll take a clean corner of the paper and we'll rub it on. Well, there is a tiny spot of pigment, so it's better than the Academy, but still not 100% sealed. Now we suspected a lot of binder with this paint, so it makes me wonder about the quality of the binder. And the professional grade paint? How much rubs off with that one? Almost nothing. The pigment is safely sealed onto the surface, and we didn't have the glistening of too much binder, and it doesn't come off if you didn't have enough binder. The last comparison we'll do with these paints is pouring. Let's see how each paint performs in a wet flow. 
I've tilted the surface and will wet a section of each paper with a fully loaded mop brush. Now I'll use a dropper and place two droplets at the top of the wet area, two for each color, and then we'll watch it. And now the student paint. Oops, I placed the blue paint first, but that's okay. Notice here that the student paint seems to be isolating a bit more than the professional grade. And now the academy paint. Well, this paint is flying down the surface. The bubble kind of sped that up a little bit, but even if you ignore that, all of the paint is traveling farther. The biggest difference is in the professional red. It immediately spread out, which to me implies a better gum arabic binder and a very fine pigment grind. Also notice the difference in the edges and the color tone. Let's see how they look once dried. This is the academic paint. The granulation in the blue came out kind of clumpy, almost like the pigment separated. Now compare that to the student paint, which has a wider spread, and the blue displays a more even, fine granulation, although it didn't flow quite as far. Again, look at the fine granulation in the blue. Let's compare it to the professional paint. It's even gentler in the better paint grade. So what about those really cheap paints, the ones that school students are often given, or the fun sets that we see in craft stores? Well, let's see how they do. We'll start with this 12 paint set by Artists Loft. Continuing with our red theme, I'll select their crimson red. There's no pigment information listed, so we're a little blind as to the pigment. Now I'll load my medium round and paint a direct line. Not much to complain about here, although it looks fairly opaque. And now I'll repeat this wet and wet. Remember, this is professional grade paper, so we're just comparing the paints. That's performing like paint on an overly sized paper. But we know this is good paper, so the pigment must be very light, and the binder, considering the price point, is probably synthetic. It also seems like the pigment load in the paint is light, because look how pale and kind of dingy it gets. So there are certainly a few issues here. Now let's try creating a blended area. It seems to stroke on okay as long as there's no additional water. Now how about a gradient? The paint flows into the next stroke, but look how easily the pigment lifted off. We have that white streak at the top where the paint lifted much too easily. And that speaks to perhaps very, very light pigment and a less superior binder. And now I'll drop in two droplets into a wet circle. Again, much of the pigment floats, so it's very light. Overall, the color is dull. They must have used a pretty inexpensive pigment in order to bring the price down to 40 cents a tube. Here we're dropping it and watching it flow. It's spreading out okay, but let's see how it dries. And here's the pour once it dried. It distributed nicely, but generally it seems unpredictable, pale, and I'm sure not very archival. Lastly, what about those eight to 12 color pans that are often given to school-aged children? I'm even told some high schoolers are given this particular Crayola set in order to learn watercolor. So this is what we'll test. Let's see how it compares. The paint in this case is in the form of a dried pan, so we're not gonna be able to pick up quite as much paint as you can with a tube paint. This red is also a different pigment. We don't know what, but it'll give us an idea of how it works. First, I'll paint a direct line. Not bad. It felt pretty satiny, but it didn't distribute well. Now let's repeat this wet and wet. I'll try to get a nice thick load of paint. The pigment isn't spreading too evenly. We'll go ahead and paint blended strokes. The pan is too small for my normal flat, so we'll use my round brush. It does pretty well. 
And now for a gradient. When I add the diluted paint, it's really not blending so well. So for gradients, I, I don't find that this is too good. It's absorbing too quickly. And now I'll drop the paint into a wet circle. But I'll have to use my brush as it's just difficult to get enough paint to use my dropper. It's hardly spreading, but where it is spreading, it's very even. Also, the color intensity is surprisingly strong. These two factors tell me that there must be a lot of binder in this paint. Another clue is that at this point, the paint in the blended strokes is still wet, as you can see here. By this time, it should be pretty much absorbed and look matte. The binder extends the drying time. So if there's a lot of binder, you're going to have a very long drying time. And finally, we'll try to get some flow by tilting the surface wet and wet. Tough to get enough paint, but here we go. And it's performing the same as in the circle. Even though binder helps give you an even flow, it also seems to give it a little more drag. So it doesn't seem to flow as far if you have too much binder in it. So let's see how the Crayola paint dried. You can see that the paint is fairly evenly distributed. The spread didn't go too far, and it still has some vibrance. This is a very nice blend, but again, it's kind of oversealed and actually could cause a problem if you want to apply a second coat. It also does risk cracking when it's dried. And it did not do well with varying degrees of dilution, which we can see in the gradient that we tried to do. So as a pure paint, it goes on nice, but when you introduce water and try to get some water techniques, not so much. I would also feel comfortable saying that this is probably not very light fast. When shopping for watercolor paints, I do recommend spending the extra money for the professional grade. Not only is the paint more balanced, but it uses a better pigment and binder and very often, because of the pigment concentration, the professional tubes will outlast the student tubes. So in the end, you really get more for your money. If you decide to go with a student level paint, try to do some research. See what the manufacturer says about the product and what they don't say. For example, Van Gogh is the student line for Royal Talon. You can tell by the use of the word quality their product points tell you the paint's strengths, which don't look too bad. But compare that to their professional line. Notice the word professional and the specific mention of finest pigments and pure gum arabic, which is the binder. The professional line also features 80 colors as opposed to 40, and these are all things you need to take into consideration. If you can't afford professional paint, just go with the best quality student paint you can afford. Perhaps purchase one tube and gauge its performance before you invest in more. If you do choose a student paint and you find you're having difficulty working with it, I recommend picking up one professional tube of paint and see if it solves the problem for you. As for academy paints, I would advise you to avoid them altogether. It's just not worth the frustration and the poor performance. Let's summarize what we've learned. First, the amount and quality of the binder in the paint can have a big impact on the performance of the paint. A subpar binder may result in inconsistent coverage and poor ability to flow. The better the paint, the more likely you'll have a better binder. Now, too much binder increases color intensity when dry. It prevents quick absorption and has a nice velvety application. But too much, once it's dry, can become brittle and the thick layer of sealant could negatively impact a subsequent layer of paint. Now note that watercolor binder is not a varnish, so it will reactivate when wet. In the opposite extreme, too little binder can cause the paint to absorb too quickly and result in a lack of seal, meaning some of the pigment can wipe off once it's dry. Plus, you can end up with some very obvious seam lines. 
We also learned that pigment quality can vary by paint grade and that that can impact the color's performance. A cheaper pigment may not cover as well, or it may lay on the surface differently. Less expensive paints sometimes use multiple pigments to replace one expensive pigment, resulting in a less vibrant and possibly less archival version of the original color. For all these reasons, it's better to buy a few professional paints than a large quantity of poor paints. If you'd like to learn more about the materials used in watercolor painting, visit udemy.com and look up Foundations for Mastering Watercolor Painting. Or visit my YouTube channel.